friends, welcome back to the channel. So today we are having almost a early, quote unquote, early summer day. For us, summer just is usually there and it's 9,800 degrees with at least 75% humidity. Um, but it's 77 degrees out, sun is shining and we are in that early spring mode. So we are needing to get some major pruning accomplished. And I'm gonna kinda let mom take point on this. This is sort of her wheelhouse more than it is mine. So we're going to take you through pruning our Rose of Sharon trees and our shrubs and kind of show you and walk you through our process and how we go about it. We're going to be pruning back really, really hard this year and really working on shaping and getting some good solid branch growth on all of our trees and shrubs. So without any further ado, we are gonna go on ahead and get started on this video. We're starting with our Rosa Sharon tree, and as you can see, it's gotten very big and very leggy. Um, it's beautiful when it blooms, um, but we haven't hard pruned it for a while. So when it blooms, these branches are so laden that they're actually pulling down and making it a risk at breaking the branches, which would then split the trunk and we could lose the tree. So the first thing I do is look to see if there's anything overtly dead. Um, you can, the suppleness of, of the branches and you can see nobody snapping off anywhere. So even though it looks like it's dead, it's just in its winter dormancy. Um, but the branches are all very supple. So I don't see anything that's dead dead. So then the next thing I'm going to look for is taking off um, branches that cross on um, these little teeny tiny branches that aren't going to do anything but add more weight to the when it blooms and bring it down. I want to keep some of these sturdier branches that can bear weight a little bit better. Um, but, um, we'll start with getting things that cross over and you can see that these branches are crossing over these branches and this one's crossing under here we want to keep an open canopy for air and sunlight and reducing pest pressure and the overall health of the tree so I, I we can start with this this little one here it's not needed it's going to cross over and be a problem same with this branch here so we're just going to you see a nub here little nub we're just gonna snip it right off and you can see that it is a viable branch because it's green in there but it's not going to be healthy for our, our tree overall this it will end up crossing you can see these little ones here are crossing underneath so all these little things are going to come off and that's where I'm going to start so we'll put you on hyperlapse while I'm cutting all these small um, crossing branches and things that are just going to help open the canopy and lift some of the weight off of the tree.
looks like we've just butchered a tree. We did. And we did. <laughs> but what I'm trying to do is look at the bend of where I've taken big branches off, looking at other branches to see what's going to fill in and still be strong, not little weak branches like this. We want good sturdy branches but these big sturdy branches at the same time they get so loaded with flowers that they can fall heavily and pull on the tree so I'm looking at overall shape seeing the nat natural bent this will cross over this somewhat but it's arcing up so it'll fill in the center so we won't look like we have this great big hole same with these branches, even though I have some spindly things here, they'll help fill in the middle. Same with this, this should go up, this should go up in there and fill in some of the holes, as well as taking some weight off of the older branches. I'm still thinking I might cut this one back some more. It's a good, big, heavy branch, but um, the weight of it can cause problems with the with the tree now here you can see off of this secondary branch we have four and if you're looking at the way this branch is curving and the way this is curving at some point these branches are going to curve over the top of each other which will not be good for airflow and the pest pressure and that kind of thing so I'm actually thinking about taking this this one out and leaving these three this one I might take back too just because you can see the natural bent of this one is going so if you've got a trajectory and this one's going this way they will cross and that could even happen this year this tree comes late spring early summer is just going to explode um, I think I'll take this off here because there's a place where another branch will grow. It could come out this way instead of angling this way and give us some more support and take some weight off of this branch. That we're training it the direction we want it to go. And this is something that doesn't happen just a one-off. It's You have to work it over a couple if not five years, right. depending upon how shaped you want the tree. See, these have a nice spread here, so I'm not worried about these. This one has a nice spread. Yes, it's going to cross this, but it's, they're not going to touch. There's still going to be airflow through here. These are going to be a little closer, so I'm thinking I'm going to take this one off. And I might even take this one off. And I think I'm going to take this one and hope it'll direct more in. This one is spindly and small, but it's thickening up, you can see, and it's in the center. So I'm going to leave it for this year and see if it just helps fill in the inner canopy some. This is a nice strong one for any canopy too, so I think I'm going to cut that one off because it'll cross. And then these I'm just going to cut back just for health of the plant. Get some of the spindlier stuff off. I think I'm actually going to cut it back. Just for the weight. And same with this. The weight on the younger, newer branches can pull down. needs to come down but as you can see we've taken things off that cross we've opened the canopy so there's good airflow um, should we reduce our press pressure which on this tree usually is the Japanese beetle I think on a previous video Heather has talked about that we use an herbicide and copper fungi spray at the beginning of spring which last year worked fantastic for keeping the Japanese because they just will eat every leaf, every flower off of this beautiful 
old Rosa Sharon. So I think I think we're done with this one. We'll move on to the other two. They're not going to be quite as much work. They're smaller um, and younger than this one is. Happy pruning. Okay, guys. So we're going to move on to the shrubs now, and we're going to get these guys pruned back real quickly. Um, so let me go on ahead and turn you around and show you what mom's going to be doing for them. So these guys are holly bushes, and we're literally just going in and tipping all the way around and doing just a general rounding shape because one day we're hoping they're going to be that big. It'll be a nice screen for along this area where we have the most Hopefully problems like with uh, wanderers showing up on the property. Uh, they don't come over here so much anymore now that we've got the thornberries because they've figured out that thornberries are not nice. I think I better leave this one alone until fall. Yep, that guy, yeah. Well, we pruned it in the fall. You tipped it. Because this one's really, really budding out. Let me come over here and not trip over molehills. But you can see it's just loaded. Yeah, it's just loaded. We'll leave it until spring. All the way along these. That's amazing. We'll do the same with that one. This will also encourage growth. So hopefully it will double maybe more because we're going to fertilize this year. Try to help speed up some general growth on these. And then these guys here are thornberries. When we had the snow and then about two weeks later we had ice, we ended up with a little bit of damage in here you can see. So we need to get that removed and then we also need to kind of nip some of the sides although they're budding out we'll just do a really light nip on them and that will just encourage them to expand because we need this one to kind of fill in over here and this guy over here has not done his fair share quite yet so we'll just get them kind of tidied up as carefully as we can you can see mom's going in with the big loppers um whew, i'm getting bit by mosquitoes okay so mom's got the big loppers because these are called let me see if i can get a good shot here see that they're designed to hurt i love them <laughs> i love these bushes two pieces um, and they have a gorgeous foliage on them. Their stems and stalks during the fall going into winter are gorgeous. And then the berries that they're always loaded with. I mean, it provides really gorgeous winter interest as well. Okay, guys. So I think that's all that we've got for you at the moment on this video. And we will see you on the next one. So, as always, keep it simple, natural, and essential. We'll see you later, guys. Bye.